In August 2012, hundreds of thousands of honeybees swarmed the body of a Delta plane heading to New York City. It happened when the crew was preparing to fuel the aircraft and load the luggage. It was time for master beekeeper Stephen Rapaski to come into play. At that time, it was already the fourth swarm the airport had to deal with in the past few months. And when in May 2012, more than 15,000 bees covered a light on taxiway C, it caused a serious flight delay. That's when the airport's wildlife administrator started to Google nearby beekeepers. Luckily, he came across Mr. Rapaski, who was later employed as a contractor. Bzzz. The sound you hear when bees aren't around doesn't come from their mouths. You hear it because they're beating their wings while flying really fast. When they're in the air, their wings make vibrations the human ear recognizes as buzzing. It's especially loud when it comes to smaller insects. Bigger bees have slower wing beats, which means the pitch of the buzzing gets lower. Insects buzz to get pollen off the flower as they move their bodies and wings. The pollen then attaches to the bee. It flies towards the next flower and deposits the pollen there. This process is called pollination. You will also hear buzzing when they're defending their hives or themselves, especially if you get too close to a bee in its natural habitat. This buzzing sound is like some kind of a warning to move away or get ready to face the angry bee. Ouch! That was a painful one. But hey, what? Ouch! Was that another sting? In that case, it's not a honeybee. A honeybee can only sting once. When it does, you can see the small stinger protruding on your skin. Once that's done, the bee can no longer pull the stinger back out. Since the stinger has nerves, muscles, and is part of the bee's digestive tract, the bee doesn't survive. Yellow jackets are a type of wasp that doesn't have such a problem. They will sting you multiple times, as much as possible. Unlike plenty of bees, yellow jackets have a stinger without a barb. It's no fun being around them or running into their nests, which provides home to thousands of jackets, or up to 50,000 in just one summer. They don't produce the buzzing sound like bees either. That happens because of differences in their behavior. Bumblebees and honeybees fly from one flower to another and gather pollen and nectar, which is also food for the colonies. If you see them flying around at grass level, they're probably collecting food they'll later take to their nest. Yellow jackets aren't that much into flowers, so they don't need to shake their wings as intensively as bees. They don't transfer or collect pollen. These wasps are predators that prefer spiders, insects, and decaying fruit. If you're having a picnic with a basket full of tasty food, get ready for an unwanted visit. Cover the food to keep them away. Their most active time is late summer and early fall. Jackets start their colony in the spring. The lone queen does it by herself. She needs to survive the harsh winter conditions first, after which she lays eggs. The colony then grows through spring and summer. When the winter comes, the old queen is done with her work, so she can now pass the crown to the new queen that will start the next cycle. None of the other wasps survive either. Both yellow jackets and bees have black and yellow bodies and are almost the same size. Bees are more hairy and chunky, while yellow jackets are not that furry or fat. They're more smooth and slender. Wasps also have a waist. It attaches their abdomen to the thorax, the body part between the midsection and the head. Honeybees live in tree holes in nests beekeepers provide them with. Jackets prefer to make their nests in exposed pipes, holes, in walls, old furniture, or even below the ground. They find some old rodent burrows and often make their nests in lawns on spots with no grass, so it's easier to accidentally step on them or disturb them with a lawnmower. Yellow jackets are way more aggressive and fierce than bees since they're predators and have a really strong instinct to protect their nests. They tend to go after people for violating their peace and will follow you over a long distance if necessary. They'll pass all obstacles and wait for their moment. If you're running away from them, don't go into the water and dive in because they'll be patiently waiting for you to run out of breath to take their revenge. Don't run in panic waving your arms around because they'll probably be faster and way more frustrated as they see you as a threat. Just raise your hands and protect the eyes first, then slowly start moving away. Honeybees sting when they really don't have another choice. They're not mean by their nature. Neither they nor wasps are hostile if they don't feel threatened. Yellow jackets are way easier to provoke than bees. 
When they see something they find dangerous coming towards, they release certain chemicals that alert the family, so they'll chase you. Wasps can make a nest from paper. First, they chew up pieces of bark and then spit it out, which is how they make a paper rougher. They all look the same to us, but wasps can recognize each other by identifying unique facial patterns they all have. They come in crazy colors including green, blue, red, and orange. The smallest insect in the world is a parasite wasp, often called a fairy fly. Male wasps are blind, don't have wings, and they're only 0.005 inches long. There are over 30,000 species of wasps, but two groups in general. Social wasps live in colonies, and solitary wasps prefer to have their nests on their own and live alone with their young. Social wasps use the stingers as a way to defend themselves. Solitary wasps use them for hunting, together with the venom they have inside. Solitary wasps aren't into stinging people and won't go after us. They help humans by taking care of insect populations on their plates. Harlequin beetle looks formidable, and it is. This bug's body reaches 3 inches in length, and its front legs are often even longer than that. They help it crawl on trees, getting from branch to branch, and males also use them to impress females. Ooh la la! Despite the looks, harlequin beetles aren't really dangerous. They won't bite you even if you corner them. And if you, by any chance, grow cabbage in your backyard, you probably would try to corner them. These bugs feed on its leaves. Still, better not to touch them with your bare hands. They exude a foul-smelling liquid that both stinks and stings, causing skin irritation. Wear those gloves, will ya? You know what also stinks? Now, besides my socks, squash bugs. If you have a garden patch, these pests can be more than just a nuisance. They could spoil the squash you've been lovingly growing for the fall, hence the name. And if you squash them, they begin to smell just awful, hence the pun. Squash bugs are also often mistaken for stink bugs, but those are even more notorious. They begin stinking even if you so much as touch them. Wow, sensitive! Giraffe weevil is probably the most harmless little fella on this list, but not much is known about it yet. It gets its name from the long, spiny neck. This adaptation helps them build nests and fight over other weevils for food and mates. It may be placid, but the red covering of its wings lets predators know the bug is either foul-tasting or poisonous, or both. Likewise, you shouldn't eat monarch butterflies or their caterpillars. These beautiful insects are often kept as pets and were once almost chosen as the national insect of the US. But the little-known fact is that they're highly poisonous. Monarchs feed on milkweed, a plant containing a potent toxin. They've acquired immunity to it, and as a side effect, butterflies accumulate the toxin in their bodies. This makes them a very unappetizing dish for birds and other predators. The concentration is so high that even humans that accidentally, or not, eat a monarch caterpillar can experience quite unpleasant consequences. Mm. Mealworm beetles are abundant almost anywhere, so you must have seen them. The most probable place to find them is a poultry farm, though. Mealworm larvae are often used to feed farm birds, and that's where the danger lies. Mealworms carry lots of diseases that can spread among birds and then to humans. They also like to eat chicken food and even insulation on farms, so they're not the best choice of a meal for birds, despite their name. And adult beetles produce a poison that's not harmful in small doses but causes allergy in high concentrations. If you happen to be at a poultry farm, make sure you avoid those beetles. Tiger beetles come in lots of shapes and colors, but they all have two traits in common – long, thin legs and sharp, sword-like mandibles. Those legs allow them to run faster than almost any other insect. So fast, in fact, that when they're on a hunt, they sometimes have to stop and look around for a few seconds. Their eyes and brain simply can't process the picture quickly enough, so they wait for the landscape to load around them. Most tiger beetles are harmless, but if you see one with an orange pattern on its back, don't touch it! 
These bugs produce cyanide to protect themselves, and this chemical can do a lot of harm both to animals and people. If you touch a tiger beetle and then rub your mouth or eyes, it might cause severe irritation. Oh look! See that wonderful pattern on a flower over there? Looks like an impressionist painting, and in a sense it is. That's a Picasso bug. These critters feed on plants and are mostly placid. But think twice if you want to take a closer look. It's not a ladybug. When touched, it'll emit a strong odor that's not exactly flowery. Worse still, you might have a hard time getting rid of the stench even hours after the encounter. Whew! Walking out of a pine forest, you notice a weird movement right beneath your feet. It looks like a little fuzzy train that's several dozen feet long. In fact, it's a defense technique of pine processionary caterpillars. They travel nose to tail in large groups to protect each other. They look really particular, but trying to disrupt the column isn't the best idea. Each car of this natural train has hundreds of needle-sharp bristles. If you touch any of them with your bare hand, they'll first cause sharp pain and then some other unpleasant reactions. Predators don't like pine processionaries for the same reason. Asian giant hornets live mostly in Asian countries, but they were reported in North America in 2019. These beasts are big, yellow, and vicious. It's impossible to confuse a giant hornet with any other bee or wasp. They're much larger and a lot more aggressive. But the worst thing about them is their stinger, which is more than three times longer than that of a honeybee. The stinger contains a really potent venom, and several stings from an Asian giant hornet can bring down even a large animal and a human too. And if that wasn't enough, these creatures can even spray their venom, aiming at the eyes. Needless to say, that's an unforgettable experience. You know, scorpions are interesting little Ouch. creatures. Six legs, two claws, and a powerful stinger. Now, what if humans also wore exoskeletons to protect themselves? So an exoskeleton is mainly made up of chitin, which is a complex material found in insects and reptiles. Thanks to their exoskeletons, these tiny creatures can defend themselves and perform acts of superhuman strength. If you wore a scorpion exoskeleton, you'd be able to climb up any building you wanted. With massive claws in the front, it would be easy to grab hold of things and even cut through them. Might be hard to open a bag of chips, though. But at night, you'd have problems – UV rays. They wouldn't hurt you or cut through you or anything, but you'd definitely glow in the dark. Not exactly ideal for sneaking up on someone. A scorpion's tail is venomous and packs a nasty sting. You could use it to sting anyone in your way. Plus, it's long enough that you could defend yourself from a safe distance. Scorpions live all over the world in some of the harshest environments, from freezing icy landscapes to scorching hot deserts. If it freezes, a scorpion can even thaw itself out under the sun. This next creature also has two claws and six legs, but it doesn't have a stinger. It's the mighty crab. Its shell is a lot more powerful than a scorpion's, and it's surprisingly quick. So you'd be seriously powerful in one of those. The downside is you'd only be able to walk sideways. And you'd be delicious to someone like me. There are almost 5,000 species of crab all over the world, each with special skills. In a crab costume, you'd definitely be a master digger. Sure, you'd be doing it sideways, but those legs and claws can get the job done. If there were crab-inspired bodysuits, they'd most likely be made for digging. You could even work underwater. You'd be agile, strong, and you'd look awesome. Humans in ant suits would dominate any construction site. Ants live in colonies around most of the world and rely on strength in numbers. But that doesn't mean each little ant's weak or anything. Just the opposite. There are actually already exoskeleton suits out there to help humans do some heavy lifting. But to use the actual strength of an ant would be a game-changer. An ant can lift around a thousand times its own weight. In a group, they can drag a bird across a field without breaking a sweat. What's even crazier is that they can carry things while they're climbing straight up a wall, or even upside down. Wow! Imagine a group of humans dragging a jet fighter up the side of the Empire State Building. 
there wouldn't be any need for bulldozers or cranes anymore. Just strap into an ant suit and get her done. Buildings could be inspired by those huge underground ant colonies. Ants are amazing at making tunnels. So, you're at home, enjoying your evening tea under a warm blanket, when all of a sudden you see a huge, no, enormous mosquito. Its long and gangly legs have a span of your palm, and it clumsily bumps into all the obstacles it meets. Despite its awkward appearance, it's still terrifying. What if it carries malaria? What if it eats you alive in your sleep? Slowly, not to draw the monster's attention to yourself, you get out from your soft chair and run for it into the bathroom, lock yourself in there, and open the browser on your phone. After a few seconds, you draw a ragged breath of relief. Turns out, it's just a crane fly, not a mosquito at all. It might look like a ferocious beast, but it's actually peaceful and even defenseless. Many crane flies don't even have mouths, so they don't eat at all. And those that have a mouthpiece will only munch on sweet flower nectar. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs. So they're slow, and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while Googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man-faced stink bug has a face on its back, with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback Caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I love that ability. <laughs> An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the inferno. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Wheatas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snakeheads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. 
peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world. Second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.